I am Ramona and welcome to Ramona Interviews. And with me in the chair today is Krista Drew. Now she is the Executive Director for the Center of Nonviolent Solution. And you can get a hold of that center at www.nonviolentsolution.org. Welcome, Krista. Thank you, Ramona. Tell us your personal passion. How did that personal passion lead you on this journey that facilitated you being the executive director of this great organization? Mm. Well, you're right. It is exactly because of my passion that I, I am here. Since I was a little girl, I just really believed in the need for harmony and for people to uh, have open communication and choice. And so I chose at a young age to be very involved with volunteering and um, really believed in the, the fact that there were more similarities than differences. Uh, if we could just sit down and communicate and, and have the skills to realize it. And so I decided to study uh, conflict resolution skills and peace studies uh, for my bachelor's degree and was very pleased to do so at Syracuse University. And then um, I became very engaged in the community. Um, I, I worked for several centers uh, which provided mediation services and mentorship. And then I got really involved with um, mediating with the incarcerated and post-incarcerated population, uh, victim offender mediation, and then eventually restorative justice, um, which is an alternative to our current criminal justice system, and really talked a lot about forgiveness and healing and looking at uh, violence as a violation of relationship. And I really believe that it is. Um, mm -hmm. And then I, I became very interested in violence and kind of the bigger, <laughs> the bigger definition, meaning that people don't have choice or the ability to meet their own basic needs, particularly around food. And so I started working with nonprofits, um, particularly around hunger and public health and domestic violence. Uh, I began to facilitate groups for men who um, had perpetrated domestic violence and so um, also worked with youth and so just saw that this is a very common a uh, reoccurring uh, challenge in our communities that we don't necessarily have the skills or the strategies to, to deal effectively with one another um, when conflict arises. And so um, I decided to go on for my master's and chose to study public policy and administration and uh, focused on nonprofit management and administration out of my appreciation for the nonprofit <laughs> sector um, and also studied food policy, which my, is my other love. Um, and so when this position opened, I, I was very pleased because I've always wanted to be an executive director and to have the opportunity to lead and to serve, really, in that capacity. Now, you have numerous programs, so let's dive yes. right in and talk to these programs so that people can understand how they really can use the center and what right. the center offers them. And there are some, you have a free mediation program. We need to talk about that. We need to talk uh, about those, uh, your youth programs and then working in the school system. Again, these are all tied into nonviolent mm -hmm. um, solutions. So tell us how somebody looking at the outside of the building would look up and go, what is the center? Mm -hmm. What does it mean for me? What can it do for me in the community? Absolutely. So the mission of the center is, um, as, as we just kind of alluded to, to focus on education and resources for the people of the Worcester area to understand nonviolence and peacemaking as a way of life, because it certainly is a, a way of life, and also to reject violence in resolving conflicts. Um, so it's uh, both a, a choice <laughs> to, mm -hmm. to embrace nonviolence, but it's also uh, takes a lot of effort and so there are specific skills, um, ways of communicating um, and, and certain practices or approaches that um, we are sharing with the community both directly through um, trainings, workshops for youth and for adults on mediation, on uh, anger management, nonviolent communication, um, we're talking about bullying prevention, a lot of the issues that are very uh, present today in our in our schools and in our streets um, and so we are offering that uh, at some of the community centers here in Worcester for example the Worcester Youth Center right now mm -hmm. we're offering a training for youth 18 to 24 uh, but we're also working directly in some schools uh, that have been wonderfully uh, open to to the center and, and to the the programs um, primarily in the, the south quadrant of Worcester um, just we're choosing to work in a specific area to stay focused um, but working with the teachers to help infuse their curriculum mm -hmm. with um, some of the philosophies and, and skills. Um, and we are looking at peer mediation programs and healthy relationship building. 
And also we have resources that individuals in the community can come and borrow. We have a lending library of CV, uh, DVDs and CDs and um, books and curriculum that people can come and, and bring home to share with their families or to the workplace or mm -hmm. uh, in the classroom. Our website is always a work in progress as they, they mostly are, um, but we do have resources that are available there and we are always um, happy and and determined to connect individuals to the other wonderful resources in the city as well. We're not looking to duplicate or compete, but really to collaborate with mm -hmm. so many coalitions and organizations here in the Worcester who do uh, um, work very diligently to address violence with our youth uh, in the schools, in the, in the streets. Okay, so you'd be a resource. So if you were a teacher, mm -hmm. for instance, um, how would getting in touch with you uh, benefit the class or the teacher? Would it be the teaching the teacher? Would it be uh, set up a curriculum that they could add into there? And that could be anywhere. It doesn't have to be just in the South Quadrant. Sure, right. Any teacher. So how would that work if I were a teacher? And then tell us about how someone could call up for mediation mm -hmm. and how that works. Sure. Um, so the first uh, step is usually to call the center or to send an email and um, either one of our staff members or board members or volunteers would, would be back in touch. Um, we have opportunity to send speakers to classrooms. We have a speakers bureau both for youth and for adults and uh, faith groups and, and civic groups um, so they can come and talk about the costs of war or, or nonviolent social movements. Um, so that's an opportunity but there's also an opportunity to work on a more in-depth level with um, curriculum development and um, trainings in the classrooms and we do like a train the trainer model. Um, so that would be the first step. So a history teacher could call up and say, you know, I, I'm interested in mm -hmm. having a lecturer come in mm -hmm. uh, and talk with my kids because we're working at this particular period in history, or it could be sure. a psychology or sociology. Mm -hmm. I mean, this covers a lot of fields Absolutely. when you, when you mm -hmm. think about it. Mm -hmm. um, now, for mediation. Sure. Uh, well, before I get to that, I just did oh, want sure. to say that we're offering a teacher's institute right now. Um, and we do have teachers from, as you mentioned, history and language arts, and we have principals in there, so all ages, elementary through high school. And so we're very excited. It is on the social movements um, of the modern world, and so uh, talking about everyone, you know, Gandhi and, and, and uh, um, other well-known leaders, but, but also other movements. And uh, so how to talk to youth about that, how to be an agent of change, how mm -hmm. to make the history that you wish to see. Uh, which is kind of exciting. Um, and in terms of our mediation services, we do offer community mediation services. Uh, we just launched that officially this summer, and so we're excited to spread the word about it. We have 30 um, experienced, trained, uh, compassionate tra uh, mediators who are willing and able to come and mediate individual disputes uh, between you know, neighbors or family members, um, workplace disputes, um, landlord tenant, you know, youth disputes um, and so this is an impartial neutral individual who will um, you know serve as a third party and kind of uh, talking about the needs and the interests and coming to a mutually agreeable and beneficial solution and the process is quite transformative I think mm -hmm. um, and that's completely free mm -hmm. and so the way to engage in that uh, opportunity is to contact the center either email mediation at nonviolentsolution.org or call the center, and then we have a mediation coordinator who um, will take the confidential information mm -hmm. um, regarding the case and then uh, assign a mediator who's appropriate. Being nonviolent is, is being thoughtful about our choices, whether it's how we're communicating, how we're um, managing our bodies, whether it's in a domineering way or in more of a collaborative way. Um, so non you know, nonverbal is very important, but it's, it's what we purchase, it's what we consume, it's how we are in the world with our neighbors and with, our, with ourselves and with our money and, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so it certainly is a, be a way of being, but um, communication is really such a big piece of it. And you're right, it is a skill. It is, it is, um, it is something that we don't focus on as much as we could, and it, it's really the root of a lot of conflicts. Mm -hmm. and, and conflict isn't negative, as I mentioned before, either, and, and it's, it's not completely avoidable, <laughs> just as human <laughs> beings, either. So yeah. it's good to have some, sc some skills and some tools and some optimism about the opportunity that it brings for greater understanding and, and uh, collaboration. Yeah. When you go into the website, you will see, you'll hear about lecturers, people in different states doing different mm -hmm. things. Um, a little information about uh, maybe somebody who's, who's just been overseas mm -hmm. and is now talking about 
um, what their peace initiatives are. But also on the website um, is the United Nations um, eight components of building a culture of peace and we do talk a lot about culture of peace and it's it's much more broad than just nonviolent solutions it's it's about having a participatory democracy sustainability um, equal rights and so it's all of these pieces that in a community together when people's needs are met when there's um, when there's justice and equality and voice really mm -hmm. um, then there's more opportunity for um, for Peace, harmony, yeah. the, the the absence of conflict. From, and the website again. Absolutely. It's www.nonviolentsolution, singular, <laughs> dot org. Dot org. Thank you so much. Thank Kristen. you, Ramona. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I am Ramona, and you've been watching Ramona Interviews. Have a wonderful week.